Okay, so let's get started with today's class. So, welcome to week 10 of the C1 course. Remember, we have class every Friday at 11 o'clock and also at 7 o'clock. Today, we are going to be reviewing contents from Unit 3. We will talk about education, and we're going to review some of the things we have been seeing in week 10. So today we are actually going to review phrasal verbs related to education. The question is, how should we use phrasal verbs in English? Yesterday, Maria, you asked me a very good question, and it is important to take this into account. Do not learn phrasal verbs by preposition or by verb. It is not a good idea to group phrasal verbs by preposition. For example, all the phrasal verbs with up, because get up, look up, take up, end up have really nothing in common. The meanings are very, very different. To get up is, of course, to leave your bed, to remove yourself from your bed. To um, take up is to start doing something. To look up is to research information. To end up is to do something on an impulse, do something without a plan. These things have nothing in common. Therefore, you should probably group phrasal verbs by preposition. Simply focus by topic, I mean. Simply focus on the topic. Which ones are related to education? Take up, to take up a course. I am going to take up a new course. Okay? Take in, understand. I take in uh, information very easily to drop out of, to stop doing something, meaning to leave before you finish. I have dropped out of my course. Therefore, you group them based on the topic, not on the preposition or the verb. So why do we use phrasal verbs? We use phrasal verbs in advanced informal language for B2, high B2, C1 and C2, you must use phrasal verbs in informal language. There are some that are used in formal contexts, but they are normally more informal than normal verbs. For example, uh, put up with is more informal than tolerate. Come up with is more informal than think of. Of course, you need to use phrasal verbs in a flexible way using mixed tenses. For example, if I have some phrases like, I take in new words with ease, it means I understand new words easily. Be careful with the phrase with ease. Many Spanish speakers use a false friend and they say with facility. It's not with facility, it is with ease. I will add a PDF to this class with false friends that you can review at home. So take in is understand. I can use it in the present. I take in new words with ease. I can use it in the past. I used to take in new words with ease. Okay, the next one, I had better Brush up on my English vocabulary. Brush up on is to improve. Brush up on is more informal and more advanced than improve. So I had better brush up on my English. I should improve my English. I want to improve my English. I am eager to improve my English vocabulary. Brush up on simply is substituted. Okay, you substitute improve with brush up on. 
So what should we be doing? Before we look at this, we're going to look at something that we had this week, which was a bit of a doubt. Okay, oh, no, we will look at that afterwards because we're going to look at phrasal verbs to begin with. For example, here we have the lesson that was a bit of a doubt and we will review this at the end. But what we're going to do is focus on some phrasal verbs. What we need to do is match the phrasal verb to the synonym. This is a good way to help us with the substitution method, okay? For example, Maria, how do you learn phrasal verbs? What do you do to improve phrasal verbs? I usually um, understand them in context. Mm -hmm. And, as, and uh, um, normally I, um, I, I try to verbalize them, to use them. Um, and to to substitute sometimes right with synonyms or something like that to understand. I previously asked you about uh, learning or understanding them by prepositions because I recently uh, seen a video a tutorial on the on the internet yeah. in which in which uh, it was said about this method of learning. Or yeah, no, it is a way of doing it. It's just not way a way I but recommend. It's it's a tricky it's a tricky way, right? Yeah. Because you you can be puzzled out. Yes, you can be puzzled out. You can be confused by it. Definitely. That's um, why I I would say it's a very advice. very advanced way to do it. There yeah. is some logic in it, but really, this is C two level. It really okay. is C two level. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Good, thank you. Now, as you were saying, you learn them in context. This is related to the listening we did. We looked yeah. at listening of ways of remembering things. It says the two rules to be able to remember something well are one, repetition, if you repeat, 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 and two, focus. When we focus on something, we relate it to something we already know. You are doing this by putting the words in context. You can translate, you can relate it to a synonym, or you can put it in context. This is the focus. This way you will remember it and learn it. So we And I also to... translate them, yes. Yeah, translating is a way. I do not recommend translating because every time you are returning to your native language, okay, it can be good because interpreting is a skill and it is a useful skill. My father often asks me, Mark, how do I say blah, blah, blah in Spanish? And the ability to interpret and translate is a little bit different from speaking the language alone. Um, I have um, three children, as you know, now, my children can speak English, but they are not very good at translating. My son, Alex, when he sometimes says things in English, I say to him, how do you say that in Spanish? And he always has to think. He says, uh, ooh. Okay. And then after some time, he can tell me. But he could not do it quickly because it's a different skill. So what we're going to do is give these phrasal verbs some context. We are going to match them to a synonym. For the people who are listening at home, I would like you to put this video in pause and I would like you please to match the phrasal verbs to the synonyms. You need to join them to the synonyms, okay? So put the video in pause and we will review. Okay, thank you very much, okay? Let's review some of the answers. So, Maria, how would you match cram for? Which meaning would you match it to? Now, cram, cram for is, could be related or matched to study at the last minute. Yes. Uh, especially for yep. exams. Or... Yeah, exactly. It is really to memorize a lot of information, but at the last moment. It's normally the night before an exam. Because if you need to memorize, it means you do not have a lot of time. You do not have time for 
deep learning. Cramming for an exam is not deep learning. You uh, will normally forget it very quickly afterwards. Yeah. So this cram an, in, study in last minute. Yeah. Could this in an university idiom, uh, like pull an all nighter? Yes, yeah, pull an all nighter is, is actually one of the expressions we are going to see this uh, unit. To pull an all nighter is to spend all night studying. It basically means spend all night cramming for an exam. Exactly. But, but it's only for studying, it's not for working, for example. Oh, can can I use it? it can be. But because we are in the context of education, we think about it. Okay. It literally means spend the whole night awake without uh, sleeping. Yeah. You can pull an all nighter doing anything. You can work, you can study, you can go to a disco, go to a party, go to a club. You simply don't go home, you don't go to bed. Okay? Right, let's take a look at the next one. Fall behind. What is to fall behind? Fall behind is not follow the pace of something. Exactly. Now, this was actually something we looked at at the beginning of the class, we mentioned fall behind. Fall behind is to not follow the pace of the class. Para los que quieren traducirlo en casa es no seguir el ritmo de una clase. Not follow the pace of a class. So to fall behind. I have fallen behind in my class because I have missed many of the classes this year. Term. Just means I'm not following the class. I'm not yeah. doing everything I need to do. Okay, the next one, puzzle out. This is one of your favorite phrasal verbs, Maria. I hear you use yeah, it. Yeah, this is my, my favorite. <laughs> um, I don't know, maybe because it describes me. Sometimes. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> puzzle out is confused. It okay. is confused, yeah. Now, if you can, uh, you know, feel puzzled out or something puzzles you out, it means it confuses you. However, if you say, in this context, I need to puzzle out this problem. It can be a way of saying to stop the confusion. I need to puzzle it out, meaning I need to focus on it so that I am not confused anymore, meaning I need to find the solution. I need to work out Okay, what the answer is. So, to puzzle out can also be to find the solution. When you say, I want to, I need to, I am eager to do it. Okay? Next, mull over. This is another good phrasal verb that we use. Over is to, to think, to consider. Yes, consider would be the synonym here. Now, to think over and mull over are the same thing. In Espanol, es como darle vueltas a algo, yeah? It is to think and think and think about something. Think again and again and again about something. To consider something. But it's not to reconsider. No, no. Simply to think about something. And think about all of the implications, all of the consequences of something. Next, keep up with. What is keep up with? Uh, keep up with is maybe to, to follow the pace of. It is to follow the pace of the class. It is the opposite the of. Opposite of fall behind. Exactly. So I am keeping up with the class. I am following the pace of the class. Remember, we say follow the pace of the class and not follow the rhythm of the class. This would be one of our false friends that we need to look at. In this lesson, there is a PDF with false friends who will be able to review and look at to do with education, okay? Next one, stick to, what would to stick to something? Uh, to stick to is continue doing this. Is, I, I like this phrase of stick to. Yeah, me too. It is to carry on doing something, 
to I can this is because I can imagine I can imagine the action. Yeah, because you you actually feel close and stuck to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, we use this a lot more really than to follow a routine to continue doing. I need to stick to, you know, the lesson plan in order to achieve my goals. Stick to, very useful. Can be to follow as well, can't it? Next, to suck at something. This is another one that came up in our listening. Yeah, uh, yeah, yesterday, actually. This is uh, be bad at. Exactly. Now, this is very informal. You can't yeah. really use it in your classes when you are teaching or, you know, if you say, I suck at speaking French, it means I'm bad at it. I'm bad at speaking French. When people ask me, are you good at football? Like, Can you play football well? I would say, no, I suck at it. I suck at football. I'm really, really bad at it. Um, Maria, do you suck at anything? Yeah, I suck at cooking. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> yeah, and um, now this is my a little secret, okay? I suck at uh, math. Oh, awesome. I didn't know that. Okay, um, I was never really, really good at maths. However, when I practiced a lot and I and I really strived to improve. I could do it, but I did not learn it easily. You know, it wasn't I did not understand high concept. Uh, oh, uh, no, high concept. No. I never it. actually got to the point of learning high concepts. You know, I did sixth form, which is bachillerato in Spain, but that was it. Okay, next one. The final one is one we have already seen, but we'll review. Take in. What is take, take in? It's uh, understand, talking yeah. about high concepts. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. So I don't take in high concepts in maths very easily. Yeah. To take in is to understand. So let's look at the answer. So these are the answers. You will see they are marked by colors. A good way to learn phrasal verbs is to relate them to a synonym and simply substitute for the synonym. For example, I do not understand high concepts in maths. I can say, I do not take in high concepts in maths, okay? So let's look at the synonyms. We have cram for, study at the last minute, fall behind, to not follow the pace of a class, puzzle out, to confuse, mull over, to consider, keep up with, follow the pace of, stick to, continue doing, suck at, be bad at, take in, consider, okay? What we're going to do now is look at some questions related to phrasal verbs. We're going to look at questions and we're going to discuss them. So if you need to write these down, put the video in pause. You can write them down and practice them. Okay, thank you. So let's move on. What we have are some different questions related to phrasal verbs. You need to fill in the gap with the missing prepositions. You will recognize these phrasal verbs from the previous exercise. It is simply a review so that we can speak. So for the listeners at home, put the video in pause, copy the question and add the missing prepositions, okay? All right, thank you. So welcome back. Uh, Maria, the first one, do you know the phrase? At? Yeah, can you tell me the whole phrase, please? So do you suck at recalling English words? Good. So do you suck at recalling English words? How could I say this in a different way? How could I read? Uh, are you bad at recalling English yeah. words? So are you bad at remembering English words? Remembering. Do you suck at recalling English words? Because recall is a way of saying remember. Good. The second one, Maria, what do you think it is? 
you find embarrassing when you need to mull over someone's name when you are speaking to them? Good. To mull over is to think and think and think about something. Think about. This basically means, do you find it embarrassing when? Uh, when do you find embarrassing when you need to think over someone's name? But why would you need to think over someone's name? Um, you? Because, because maybe you, 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 because you can easily forget. Yeah, you forget, you forget it. Forget yeah, exactly. You can't, can't remember uh, uh, with ease. Exactly. This is when you are speaking to someone and you cannot remember their name. You are thinking, what was their name? What is their name? What is their name? And you can't remember their name. This happens to me a lot because I have many students and I also have many acquaintances, you know, people I do not know that well, but I speak to lots of people every day. And there are some people that I find it difficult to remember their names. Yeah. So is it embarrassing when you forget people's name when you are speaking to them, for example? Next one, please. Number three, Maria. What will we put? Cram for exams at the last minute. Yeah, so do you cram for exams at the last minute? Simply meaning, do you try to memorize a lot of information before mm. you do exams? No, 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 this is, no, I don't, actually. It's not a good idea. Always it's not a good idea, it's not my style. It is, yeah, and something like a language, you cannot cram for it. It doesn't work like that. You cannot cram for the C1 advanced exam. You must know it. You can cram to translate words, yes, but you can't cram to know a language. It doesn't work. You cannot memorize a language. It doesn't work. Okay, next one, please. Number four. Do you? Uh, do you struggle to keep up with trivial topics like gossip? Good. So to keep up with is to follow. Uh, to, to follow, be yeah. on track, yeah. To, uh, to update. <laughs> to be updated, yeah. Be up to date on something, yeah. So... Do you find it difficult to follow and remember and be up to date with gossip? Yeah, gossip, you know, what people talk about. You see, I never do. I, I'm, yeah. Next one, number five. How might? How might you deal with having a failing memory? Good. Deal with. What deal is with. Deal with? Uh, um, manage. Yeah, manage handle. Some. Yeah, or to face a difficult situation, it can be. If you face a problem, you deal with a problem. You try to solve the problem. You try to manage the problem. So this is an interesting question. And the it next one. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Sorry. Do you? Uh, do you? Uh, do you take in? Do you take in new information with ease or do you have the memory of a fish? Fantastic. So to take in is to understand. Take in to so understand. To, now, to consider. You know the expression, the have the memory of a fish yesterday. Yeah. Do you, do you use this expression also in Romanian? Yes. That's why I... Yeah. I uh, in, Spanish, it, in Spanish, it is also used. I, think I, I, didn't, used I didn't have an idea. Languages. In Spanish, but yeah, yes. There are actually there are many expressions we can we can uh, translate. You know, mot amop in Romanian. Yeah, okay. idioms or yeah, there are lots of expressions in Spanish and English that are similar as well. Uh, not loads and loads, but quite a few. For example, to be in the clouds, to be distracted. We use this also in Spanish. You know, there are many. To hit the nail on the head. We also use in Spanish. There are quite a few that are the same, but there are something different. Okay, so let's review the answers and discuss. Here are the answers. Do you suck at recalling English words? Do you find it embarrassing when you need to mull over someone's name when you are speaking to them? Do you cram four exams at the last minute? Do you struggle to keep up with trivial topics like gossip? How might you deal with having a failing memory? And do you take in new information with the ease or do you have the memory of a fish? What we are going to do, Maria, is talk about these questions. So, number one, Maria, do you
Do you suck at recalling English words? Sometimes, yes, I do. I, I must recall. Um, but not all the time. That depends on my on my uh, mood or that depends on the context. Um, and uh, uh, it's, I'm not into big trouble when it comes uh, to recalling English as I like it. But yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes, yes, I, I must recall, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, and I think this can happen. I think this is fairly common. Though. But not only English words, <laughs> not only English words. Sometimes I suck at recalling Romanian words. Oh, okay, yeah, but that can be just because you have a lot of information in your head and you are thinking about a lot of things. Yeah, it would be, yeah. Yeah, and no, I, think, I think that's fairly common, isn't it? Okay, now, let's see. Number two, do you find it embarrassing when you mull over when you need to mull over someone's name when you are speaking to them. Now, does this happen to you? Do you ever forget someone's name when you are speaking to them? Uh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I I think this happens to everybody. Yeah. It's, it's natural. It's normal that maybe you are not focused on, or maybe you are you are taken aback that. Yeah. You, uh, that uh, moment, or or maybe maybe uh, you you met that person once long before, and uh, yeah yeah okay. it happened to me not not, not frequently but it happens. Okay. Oh, you see, it happens to me frequently. I really dislike it, <laughs> but it can happen. Okay, do you cram four exams at the last minute? No, 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 no. Not at all. No, this is this is something that I hate. I I do prefer uh, to to study the uh, step by step, little by little, to keep practicing, um, but not to do this in the last minute. No, would because it's say, nonsense. You it's nonsense. It, would you say you find it stressful to do that? Uh, not only stressful. It's not only, but it's uh, it's useless. Uh -huh. Yeah, like I agree with you. I think it's a waste of time. It's definitely a waste of time. I think really we should try to focus in other ways. Uh, I really think it's a bad idea. Yeah. Okay. Do you struggle to keep up with trivial topics like gossip? Oof. If if I um. Uh... To, please uh, allow me a second to think about um, think over your answer to mull over your answer yeah. uh, okay I'll be sincere uh, I hate gossip mm -hmm. I'm not that type of person uh, who uh, who's into gossiping uh, but sometimes I really find um something amusing or something fun to listen to but it depends on the gossip yeah okay you know yeah, there are different things um do you know what many people do enjoy speaking about other people some people find other people more interesting than others um you see i personally would prefer not to know gossip if it is something negative because i find it a lot better if i don't know we have an expression in English, which is, what you don't know can't hurt you. Now, yeah. from personal experience, it is better not to know some things about your friends, your family, or your partner, or anyone. Because, you know, sometimes it is not really your business, and you really just don't want to know. This. Yeah, but why, why to... To take in some information or try to gather information that is non unnecessary. So the, yeah. there are details that can spoil your life. Or yeah, exactly, that. that's true. That's true. Now there are um, there are people that really enjoy it. You know, I have some neighbors in my small urbanization community where I live, and they are always very informed about everyone. They know lots of details about. And I personally just don't 
try to keep up to date with this. I don't even try to keep up with gossip. So I do not struggle. I do not struggle because I don't even attempt to do it. I don't yeah, even it's try. Necessary. Yeah, so it's not a struggle for me. I yeah, there's no point to that. Yeah. yeah. I just uh, don't. <laughs> okay, next. How might you deal with having a failing memory? This is personally me. Oh, or anyone. Is, uh, no, you in general. How might uh, a person you deal in general? With? Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, by, by having a healthy life or maybe to cut down um, on your uh, bad habits. Okay. Uh, okay, to take um, some uh, time for you, uh, okay, to rest. So to try to, 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 to have a good sleep, a good rest, um, to exercise, uh, to, and to train your brain, okay? Uh, we, we talked about that yesterday. Yeah. To train your brain. Uh, by, I don't know, memory games or crosswords or... Well, simply being so, active and using your... Yeah, to be active, to be active, to be yeah. active, yes. Um, I know you and, again, accept, and you have to accept, admit, and accept that you have a problem, maybe. Because yeah, that, that's probably the first step. Yeah. yeah, because if you don't recognize it, <laughs> yeah, you, exactly. you can't improve your memory or you can't... Exactly. Well, I think the first step with dealing with any problem is accepting that there is a problem. Um, Miguel Angel yesterday spoke a lot about bad habits. And if you avoid drinking alcohol, you know, these types of things will help your memory. And yes, I would say that's true. That is definitely true. So I think it is probably a good idea to avoid bad habits and try to stay active. Okay, what things do you do to train your memory? You said, to keep it active. Do you use any memory games? Yeah, memory games. Uh, Sudoku, no. Because okay. <laughs> I hate figures. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, no. no. My uh, stepmother really uh, likes crosswords. Crosswords. I, I do crosswords, memory games, um, tests, this kind of test that um, usually you can find them in, in the magazines or in the internet. Yeah. Um, also, yeah. simply reading and things like this is a good way. I think it will. Be. Yeah, some of my happiest memories of when I was a child were doing crosswords with my grandfather. Because in the summer, when I was a child, I always lived with my grandparents because my mother was a nurse and she she was always working, you know, long shifts. She worked a lot. So in the summer, we went and we lived with our grandma and grandfather in near to London. And we always did a crossword every day with my grandfather. And I, I really, I really enjoyed that. It was, uh, it was a really nice thing. Is this what he was my really good at it as well. He was really good. But we, you know, we tried. This is what my father used to do, crosswords, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic way. And I took after him. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. No, it's good. It's very good. Yeah. And I think we quite often have similar interests. Okay. Um, other things that can help your memory can be things like playing a musical instrument. If you play a musical instrument. No, be... I look, I suck at playing musical instruments. Oh, yeah? No. Oh, dear. No, no. There was inspired. an attempt when I was uh, younger. There was an attempt, um, but I failed, you know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's something you need with consistency and things. Um, they also say, yeah, most experts say, another way is learning foreign languages that really can help your memory. Yeah, this, this is, yeah, my the best father, part. Yeah, my father, he's started learning Spanish. He's 67 years old. I hope he doesn't mind me saying that he's 67 years old. And he started learning Spanish when he was 65. And he says he actually notices that his memory is better. Yeah. Simply from Absolutely. doing it every day. Yeah, he definitely notices it's better. Okay. And uh, let's look at the final question. Do you take in new information with ease or do you have the memory of a fish? Uh, it's a fun question. That's depend on, on the information. 
or depends on on my stay on my mood but uh, normally i find uh, myself taking in the new information with this uh, it, it's not i'm not into big trouble or i'm not into trouble when uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's uh, fun because I, I have never thought about that. But, yeah. but taking into consideration, yeah. Okay. No, okay. It, it's not. It's not very. No, it's not. I, I can do it. Yes. Okay. Okay. You see, I feel I have a very good memory for some things, but I feel that I have a very bad memory for other things. I think when I am interested in something. My memory is very good. However, when it is something I am not interested in, I feel my memory is actually quite bad. Um, and I think that's definitely true in most cases. I think it's to do with your focus, isn't it? If, if you are interested, you will prioritize this memory. You will prioritize this information. Okay. Um, what types of things do you have a bad memory? Sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah. What types of things do you have a bad memory for? Calculations. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Or, or maybe the things that I I rejected or I'm not interested in. Okay. You know, it, these kind of things. Or sometimes I, I struggle to not to remember. Okay. I have a terrible memory for plans. For example, when my wife says to me, next weekend we are going to go, I don't know, with our friends for a meal. I'm like, okay. But I forget immediately. I will only remember on the Friday when my wife says, we have the meal this evening. I'm like, oh, oh okay, yeah, you're right. And I never remember. I never, ever remember these things. But if it's things related to my job, then I remember. I definitely remember. Normally without writing them down. And you know, it depends. Okay, so we've seen some key questions related to these phrasal verbs. All of them are related to the topic of education or the memory. The memory, of course, is related to education. Now, let's look at our grammar point that I wanted us to review. We need to be careful with a false friend that I hear a lot. Even at C1 level, we hear it a lot. So, how do you say a uh, Spanish phrase? A mí me cuesta aprender inglés in English. Yeah? Now, do not use it costs me to learn English. Now, most Spanish speakers use this phrase. It does not make sense. The only sense this has is it costs me a lot of money to learn English, you could say if you pay a lot of money for your course. Does this phrase exist in Romanian, Maria? It costs me to do something. Yeah. Yeah, that exist. could be why. That's probably why, okay? Yeah. yeah, it does exist and that's why I was confused. Yeah, when I... we just don't use it. Okay, I would say most English spe speakers will understand it, but we just don't say it. But I heard... Uh someone saying that yeah, and it's, I, badly, I, it's badly said it will probably be someone who maybe speaks another language or maybe someone who is not yeah. a native speaker it's, it's not a native it's not a native yeah language. yeah no, but do you know what it is understood it's just my not... workmates and that's yeah. right yeah they will use it yeah i imagine many will. now you can say do you have problems learning something do you have problems doing something, but notice we have various different expressions. I can say, I find it difficult to learn English. I struggle to learn English with the infinitive, but then we also have with the gerund. I have difficulty learning English. I have trouble learning English, or I have problems learning English. Do not use, it costs me to learn English, okay? Right, so these are key phrases. Now, 
Very quickly, we're going to look at some questions and we're going to look at general questions, talking about learning things. And we're going to look at some phrases we saw in the speaking, in the listening on Thursday. To learn something verbatim is to memorize something, to copy something, word for word. Layman's term with an A, not an E, layman's terms, means to say something in simple words so that anybody can understand it. An average person can understand it. Okay, so Maria, here's the first question. For the people who are listening at home, put this in pause and you can simply answer the questions when Maria is speaking. So Maria, do you normally learn English phrases word for word? No. No, 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 it's not my style. I normally try to learn English um, the phrases uh, by understanding, by by placing them in context, or maybe by um, by substituting when there is the case. But learn, learn for word, no. So yeah. now it uh, is much better, as you are saying, to learn it in context. It is better to it is be better. flexible and be able to manipulate the phrase. But in the past, the present, the future is probably a very good idea. Okay? Right, thank you. Maria, do you have a good memory for English words? Uh, I think I do. I think I do. I can remember um, the English words, uh, but there are moments when no, it doesn't work. So okay. generally, yes. In general, yes. So there are times that it doesn't work. There are times that I can't remember. Yeah, exactly. I think that's very, very common. Yeah. Okay, next one. Are you used to taking notes by hand? Do you normally take notes, hand yes. or maybe? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Sorry for being um, uh, like uh, for interrupting you, but uh, yes, I am. This is uh, my favorite way of learning. Or um, every time when I uh, um, come into contact, get into contact with new information, or when during the classes, or okay, I I I tend to write. Yeah, I because think it's the best way. Yeah. Do you the use different way. colors, or do you have a specific system? Yeah. Uh, using different colors or underlining them or highlighting, yeah, uh, it helps me a lot because for the yeah, photographing, or, yeah, yeah, I do or, as well. It's like helps you to spot them out. Yeah, mm. I visualize and I remember and I associate to colors. Yeah. yeah. Next one. What training would you like in the future in English? So, what things would you like to learn about? What courses would you like to do? What exams would you like? This is the best, the best question ever. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I visualize myself uh, speaking. Uh, let's why not? Uh, perfect English. <laughs> I right. want to. I want to brush up uh, on my English to enhance my English. Yeah, so you want to master English? Yeah, uh, I want to master perfect. this English? language. Yes, to be able to speak it. Perfectly. Yeah, I think that's a very, very good aim. And yeah. I think it is something you will be pursuing your whole life because you yeah. are constantly learning. You will realize that the more you know, the more there is to learn. You know, I learn new English words every day because yeah. I read. If you read, of course, you will learn new English words often. Okay? Right, next one. Why can we become distracted from our studies. So why can we get distracted from our studies? Because uh, there are different uh, elements that can distract us. Uh, and maybe, maybe because of our tiredness or we are, maybe our mind uh, is not uh, prepared, you know, for, yeah, it could be a different reason. People, sometimes people uh, simply don't focus on or 
yeah, this is. Or... Yeah, yeah, I think maybe people get distracted because they do not focus on one task at the same time. I think a big problem is multitasking. People trying to do more than one thing at the same time. Would you say this is in a hurry and yeah. multitasking? Uh, being in a hurry, yeah, rushing. If you rush, then yeah, that can also be a problem. Yeah, I understand. Okay, next question. How could you focus on learning something deeply? On learning something deeply. Yeah. Uh, really understand something. That well, first of all, you have to, to try to to understand the concept to uh, and to to say it aloud to try to describe it to imagine uh, you know and of course to um, to to have this intention you know to be willing to understand it so yeah i think a very good way is actually to um like explain it to another person. When you actually think you understand it, you explain it to somebody else. And oh, it's about understand it, and you think, okay, I, I know how to talk about it. Um, I realized that my understanding of English improved a lot when I started teaching it. Because, you know, you have to understand it more and be able to explain it in layman's terms, yeah. I would say that's definitely useful. Okay, final question. How do you like learning new things by heart? So how do you learn new things by heart? Mm. I, I reckon uh, that learning things by heart, in my case, uh, works um, for poems, for songs, or when I, I was a kid, or a student, um, it, when it comes to uh, formulas, you know, but learning by heart uh, um, generally is not a good idea because uh, you can't understand. You can't. Uh, it's um, it's not like um, learning deeply. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, you know, if you learn in a superficial way, if you memorize, then obviously yeah. you do not learn deeply. Um, when, when you say to learn something by heart, it normally means you will remember it forever because you really, really, really understand. It. I think good ways are simply to focus on it, to also to um, repeat it often. If, if you repeat it frequently, then I think you will normally learn it better by heart. Yeah. Okay, so let's stop there and see what we've seen. We have looked at how can we learn phrasal verbs in English. Do not learn phrasal verbs by preposition or by verb. When you get to level C2, then maybe you can group them in prepositions and verbs, but you will notice there are not any like really, really strict patterns. There are some similarities. For example, if I talk about up as a preposition, up can mean completely, totally, yeah? To fill up is to fill something completely to the top. Eat up something is to eat all of something. Drink up is to drink all of something, okay? Use up is to use all of something. But as I've said, it does not work with all verbs. Take up does not mean take all of something, of course. Um, in, in all contexts, it can mean take all of something, but it normally means start doing something. Now, we have the phrase, what can you tell us about your education? Yeah, the question. We have seen many different ways to talk about our memory about our education, we need to speak about them. And be careful with false friends. In this class, you have a PDF that explains false friends. There are examples. You need to 
identify the false friend, and learn the correct word. You can do this exercise at home. It comes with answers. We've also seen how can we sound more fluent in English. Well, the idea is you need to deep learn English. You need to repeat it frequently and practice speaking. A good way to do it is to use our Instagram channel or our YouTube channel to follow the videos and you can speak and use it this way and also to follow our classes on the platform. If that is it, we are finished for today. Thank you very much, Maria, for the class. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed the class. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, send me a message to WhatsApp or to my email, and I will be happy to answer. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next class. Thank you.